The Vikings now move to 12 and 3 after another thriller, beating the New York Giants in the whiteout game. Final score 27-24. Good lord. Doesn't matter how you did it as long as you did it, I suppose. But this team Oh my God, this team, I don't know if I can handle this. Not for the rest of the year, although I know I'm going to. I'm just being dramatic. But the fourth quarter, Justin Jefferson touchdown makes it a 24-16 game. The Giants then turn around and march up the field on the back of Saquon Barkley after the 27-yard touchdown run. The two-point attempt, Daniel Bellinger, wide open. P2 had to make a last-second attempt to try and make it a challenge. It's tied 24-all. Final drive, third and eight. Giants defensive coordinator Wink Martindale sends the house. Don't matter. Jefferson for 16 and a first down. Later in the same drive, third and 11. Screen pass to Jefferson. Outstanding blocking led by Ezra Cleveland. They get a gain of 17. And then the moment of truth. Greg Joseph lines up from 61 yards out. No way he makes this. Won't even be close. Clearly, we're going to overtime. And he nails it for the walk-off win. Years from now, when anyone mentions the 2022 Vikings, we're all going to have to sit down and take a deep breath before we even begin to talk about it. It's too much. Every game of this season takes another year off your life. But now 12-3, and three, Jefferson has surpassed Randy Moss's Viking single season receiving yards record with another whole two games to go in this season. So you can't use the, well, it's an extra game in a 17-game season argument. Another game for him, another 100-plus yards, 12 catches for a buck 33 and a score. I said it before the season started, and I'll say it again. He's the best receiver in the league. Justin Jefferson is the NFL's wide receiver one, and he deserves to be in the MVP conversation. However, if Cooper Cup last year, also a wide receiver who got the triple crown, by the way, if he can't get the MVP award, I feel like it's more of the same for Jefferson. They're never going to give it to a wide receiver. However, not to get lost in the Jefferson heater or the Greg Joseph winner, Although, going back to Greg Joseph for just a second, that along with the block punt by Josh Metellus, what Vikings after dark commentary will special teams coach Matt Daniels say after today? I don't even want to try and guess, but end of sidebar, TJ Hawkinson. This was the Hawkinson-Jefferson combo game that I've been waiting for ever since the Detroit trade. Jefferson had 133 and a score. Hawkinson, 13 catches for 109 yards and two touchdowns. That second score he had in the fourth quarter to make it a 17-13 game. Moss the hell out of two Giants defenders. Yo, it took me everything not to. By the way, I'm recording in a hotel right now away from my brother-in-law's house for Christmas. The whole family is over there. So for the sake of recording in silence, I'm at a hotel. But watching that play in real time, the second Hawkinson score, it took me everything not to shout out at the top of my lungs because I don't want to be that guy in the hotel that's causing a disturbance for everyone else on my floor to deal with. But that play had me in shambles. Kirk Cousins, nearly 300 yards, three touchdowns, sacked four times, tough in the pocket. In fact, the toughness of Kirk Cousins can be defined in one play today. Aziz Ojolari took a hard-ass swipe to the football while Kirk Cousins still had it in his hands. Ball barely flinched. Now, he kept the play alive briefly after that before he ultimately got sacked, but the point of that was any other quarterback in that situation outside of Josh Allen, that's a sack fumble easy. Dalvin Cook, not a bad day at the office. He has 64 yards. A low period for much of the third quarter, that is, up until the second Hawkinson score. But Kevin O'Connell and the Vikings did just enough to stand tall against a likely playoff team in the NFC. And the defense, shout out to Patrick Peterson because early on he was getting absolutely cooked by Isaiah Hodgins. He himself, Hodgins, had 89 yards and a touchdown. He was chirping at P2 back and forth. And I said, man, you know what? Peterson, he's got to get him back sometime, right? Now, in the first half, this is the same drive we're talking about. In the same drive, Hodgins gets a big first down with P2 in coverage. P2 then gets a pass breakup on Hodgins, except defensive pass interference on Peterson. Then Peterson helps facilitate a sack off the corner blitz. Love that for him. And in the second half, Giants marching up the field. Daniel Jones targets Isaiah Hodgins. Peterson undercuts it, gets the interception. And how about that World Cup penalty kick celebration, huh? That was nuts. Also, shout out to Daniil Hunter, who had two, count them, two sacks on the day. Brian Asamoah, my guy, had a fumble recovery. I cannot wait until this dude is a starting inside linebacker next year. But the Vikings, they won. their 12 and 3. My prediction of 14 and 3 is still very much on the table. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. I appreciate you all. Enjoy the rest of your holiday weekend.